me try again. Thank you. Desktop one, desktop two, and I'm so automatic at hitting desktop one. Oh, well, thank you for pointing that out, Ian. This is all the stuff you've missed so far and seeing on the screen. Um, that's a that looks good. Desktop, but well, lots of things to see on my screen and list of files. Oh, well. Okay, let's get started. Um, I will hand over to uh, who's going to present, Golda? No, Kenny. Uh, Kenny's going to present. He's the Kenny's one who's been working present. on it. Right. Okay, so I will stop sharing that screen or either screen and turn it back over to Kenny. Yeah. Good day, everybody. So, stop sharing my screen. I don't know if... Can we all see yeah. my screen? Yeah, yes. I see screen, Kenny. Okay. Um, so, what... We are doing right now is to send um issue credential through the VCDI format, the W3C format. Um so I've I've started running the agents due to because it takes time to run the agent. Like so I've started running it already prior to the meeting. So this is the Faber agent. We're running the Faber Alice agent um Alice agent. So this is the um Faber agents already running and created connection between both of them. So uh let's up to that here. So yeah, um this is the part where um the Faba issued the credential to Alice. We could see the credentials issued. The connection ID, um, the comments, and the formats, the filters through the VC formats, and get to send an offer to Alice. And we could see the attachment formats, and we could see the credential offer where um, Alice was issued a credential of. Um, Oh, I, I think I'm and not sure we're seeing, are we seeing the whole part of your screen, Kenny? I think I'm only seeing the part where the build finished. Do you want to load onto your screen the part with the VCDI credential offer? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm only seeing the terminal with the uh, Docker Compose build. Okay, I think that's... Maybe it's in a different tab of your terminal, or if you oh. want to share your whole screen, either way. Okay, I'm trying yeah, to. Yeah, no worries. Wait, let me stop and share again. Mm -hmm. uh, this seems okay. to be a theme today. There we go. Okay. So is it better right now? Yeah. Yes. Now we can see. We're seeing okay. the QR code and and the rest of the log. Yeah. So um okay, what you guys missed out? Um the connections were already created between Faber Agent and Alice Agent. So um this was the part where I sent a credential. I issued a credential rather um to Alice which is up and running already. Um, we could see that um, it sends to, it sent, um, sent a pillow to the, to the endpoint sent offer, which sent an offer and created a credential um, proposal with the format of VCDI. Um, as we said before, VCDI is just um, the W3 format, but that's the name we chose. We all chose. Um, and also with the filter attachment and the credential offer being sent to Alice. So, um, um, that's uh, that's so if you look at Alice, Alice received a credentials. Uh, 
eşit to a. Uh, let's get down to where I could eşit to a. So, alpha was received. And uh, credentials was being issued to Alice. Cool. And then, so, um, and that, yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead. That's it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. We, we could send um, an issue credentials from Power to Alice in the VPC. So, as far as the new endpoint, I think we tried to make them as you know, <laughs> smallest smallest perturbation as possible. Um, I don't know if Sarthak, if you want to share as far as using the new endpoints. Okay. Um, or Kenny, as far as using them, it should just be a matter of choosing the type to use. Yeah. And I don't know, Kenny, if you want to show the piece of of the code. I don't. I don't know if you had that prepared to just show the call to them. Um, in the branch so that people can see how to call them. It's, you know, it's as little different as possible. So it's like, it's not a whole big chunk, uh, you know, that you have to you have to import. I believe it's just a flag that you're adding. Um, so it's, you know, this is, this is as little perturbation demo as we can do. Um, do you want to share that, Kenny? I'm not sure if you have it handy. I don't want to put you on this. Okay, yeah, um, I, could, I could share that and this should be it. That is when trying to run it, you have to declare um, there's a declaration of the credential type you're running with. I think I should just Yeah, I mean the code for the new demo, I don't know, like uh just to show the um you know the test that we're running in the code to just to show that it's it's almost the same as the other demos, but just like a slightly different flag and format. Okay, that that should be good. Let me get that. Um, sorry. Um, I, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no worries. And if there's questions, uh, Sarthak's also here who's been working on it some too. So um, the code is still in our repo with a pull request into uh, the Yakapi. So if anybody has opinions about the pull request, uh, they're welcome to put it in there. I saw a couple things myself that I want to make it a little more dry. So we're still... Um, you know, we're still doing a few final changes on it uh, the next couple weeks before it's actually going to merge. Um, we could just share the, we could just open the PR and share that. I don't want to take too much time here, uh, Stephen, if there's other stuff we got to do. Yeah. But... yeah. Warren, you want to go ahead with your question? Yeah, thanks. Um, <clears throat> I haven't really been uh, paying attention to what's been going on in the uh, in this particular uh, branch of uh, investigation. Would somebody yeah. mind catching me up a little bit if that's not too yeah. disruptive to the meeting on what's uh... this is um, providing a way that the a non creds credential is passed in W three C VC data model format. VCDI means um, VC data integrity proof. And so the format is of, of the credential and the presentation is in the uh, VC data format, uh, VC DM W3C format. So what that means is we're passing data in a standard um, W3C standard format. Um, it can be held whether or not um, it can be held uh, by a, a a, a holder that may or may not know about it non creds and, and in particular um, we can do parallel signatures meaning we can put in a non creds and a for example ecdsa signature on the same credential and leave it up to the holder and um, where the holder is interacting with a verifier which um, signature to use for a given presentation. So that's the, the sort of goal of this. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, go ahead. So I'm, I'm wondering about the compatibility, like uh, are there wallets that would then be able to ingest this or interact with this that wouldn't have been able to before? 
So we're um, in parallel to this. There's an effort, um, a code with us that Animo um, Solutions is developing that adds this to both Credo and and to Bifold. So we we plan on using this in BC Gov, and you know allowing others to use it as well, so that so that we can transition over to always using W3C format credentials, compliant credentials, and there's no more. Is it a non creds? Um, it's still going to have an non-cred signature, but the format will be W3C format. I see. Okay, thanks. And then, and then as well as I say, that does lead to this idea of parallel signatures, so that where a, for example, a jurisdiction or a verifier absolutely requires that a, for instance, hardware-based key be used, that can be done, but where. Uh, but that allows, you know, linkability and and um, less privacy protection. And so, um, where that's not absolutely required, um, a, the privacy preserving credential signature can be used. Yeah, I mean, for what it's worth, guys. I mean, I got interested in this because Ceramic is doing a similar thing, where it's basically these are all just JSON blobs, and like, why can't we arrange them in a format that's compatible with W3C since that's also a JSON blob with certain rules and and a signature. And so um, I'm excited to see everybody kind of standardizing on, on the actual standard. And that way, you know, if they have that in the Credo wallet, then somebody else who's not even in the non-creds universe can like, oh, I look at this credential, they can use it. And I, I think that's, that's going to be kind of cool. Um, yeah, great. Thank you. Any other questions? And uh, yeah, I think, I guess you've got it up on the screen, uh, Kenny, as far as just, you know, what it is you need to do to use it is just in, there's a demo there. Excellent. Um, yeah, so we totally welcome any thoughts as you're preparing for the final merge. It, we should be getting approval and merging within, uh, we said by March 15th, I think. So that's the goal. Um, and we'll be working okay, with good. people's group more. Excellent. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks very Any much. Any other questions or comments? All right. Hey, I picked the right screen again. I think you're seeing the, the agenda. Excellent. Okay. Um, I'm still seeing the credits demo. Are... Oh, there we go. Oh, okay. Just a slight delay. I got it. There were actually two screen shares running for a second there. But we're oh, good now. interesting. I just grabbed it even without waiting, but we're good. Okay, good. Okay, presentation. Um, so updates on various things in OnCreds RS. Is Jamie here? Yes. Yeah. Jamie, you want to give us updates? I believe endorser is done. Yeah, it should be. Um, all integration okay. tests are working for endorsement and running on PRs. And it, yeah, that's so cool. I think that should be done unless something comes up. But... Okay. Um, and now, uh, We've been working on a design and then Jamie started working on um, an OnCreds RS update process. So when you want to transition to using an OnCreds RS, um, the multi-tenant case um, had to be handled carefully. Notably, um, what we want is for an OnCreds, um, for a tenant to be able to independently update their tenant to use an OnCreds without having to do it in um, in coordination with all of the other tenants. So we didn't want to have an Akapai upgrade caught, trigger the... Um, so when you start to use the non-creds RS, you have to update the rec a series of records um, related to um, credential exchanges. And um, if that was done at the Akapai level versus at the tenant level, then it would require updates to controllers of all of the tenants at the same time. And we didn't want to have that 
certainly in BC Gov, we have tenants that use um, their own controllers, independent uh, implementations of controllers. And so um, the update process now will allow tenants to upgrade on their schedule. So there's actually a endpoint that is called. And the, the basic idea is the controller would um, ramp down their instances for a given tenant controller, ramp up the instances with new code that uses the new endpoints for an on-creds, and that new code would also call the endpoint to upgrade the um, records necessary. So that would all be coordinated within the tenant controller and independent of um, certain settings in Akapai. Obviously, there's things you can't do, such as upgrading from an Indie SDK tenant, uh, if you will, to um, uh, using an on creds. RS directly. So you've got to be on ASCAR already um, and things like that. So um, that change has been done. Um, what Jamie's been working on right now is making it so that CredX and an OnCreds libraries are both loaded into Akapai so that tenants can be using either of them and, um, and that all the uh, endpoints are available. However, depending on um, which wallet type the tenant is using, whether they're using ASCAR or ASCAR and non-creds, certain endpoints will return, uh, will uh, will just return as not available. Um, so if you're using CredX, the new endpoints will be not available. If you've transitioned to using an on-creds, the old endpoints will be not available, but those will be not removed entirely, but rather will be um, on use, there will be a check and say, no, you can't use this endpoint given the state of your um, settings and, and your tenant. I think I got that all right. Um, and Jamie's enabling that and and getting that work done. Um, Jamie, you wanna give a brief update on where you are on that then? Um, yeah, it's pretty close. There's like a lot of work to, well, there's a lot of work to do with the, integration tests and yeah. the demo because when you run it in a non-creds then it has to use the different endpoints for creating yeah i think this like the schema and cred def were already done but now the there will be different paths for a non-creds revocation versus normal revocation so all that had to be changed but yeah i'm hoping to have a PR ready to buy today. Yeah, I saw the the PR you put in. You, so you've got a, a start of it in there, but more to do. So that's awesome. Yeah. Um, one quick question on the revocation. Are we in the new version? Are we a limited controller control of the revocation? Like it's all handled by Akapai now. Um, I don't know, Daniel or Ian. Is that all under the covers, if you will? That's what we wanted, I believe. Uh, I believe that is true. The, um, the only thing that was like left as a question um, in the implementation was whether we needed to expose recovery processes, which I think we decided we did want to have some recovery mechanisms. Um, okay. Since that's something we've experienced in the wild before. Yeah. Uh, but uh, like manually setting up a revocation registry or... Um, a, a series of uh, entries that manually doing any of that stuff has been removed and it's all just handled automatically. Okay, good. Good to hear. Um, I had a, uh, I, I answered a question on Discord where somebody was outlining all the steps they were doing as a, uh, as a controller and I'm just like cringing because I'm just saying, no, you don't have to do all that. If you do this, it's done. <laughs> So anyway, good to hear. Be, um, yeah. Thanks. It should be pretty straightforward. Like you have to send a different payload, but it's not like a lot different for creating schemas and cred defs. And then the revocation endpoints are almost the exact, or I think they are pretty much the same for most of them. Okay. So in theory, it should be pretty easy to 
change over then. Good, good. Okay. Any other questions, comments on the non-creds RS work? It sounds like we're we're getting to the end, getting to the close to the end of it. Um, Daniel, are you back enough that I can schedule a meeting with you? Um, yes, I, I'm back enough. Okay. Um, I really like to talk to you and perhaps uh, Ian and Jamie as well. And anyone that's interested, let me know. But um, on um, how one goes about implementing another uh, ledger. So another VDR in Akapai with an OnCreds RS in place. I think you've done the most thinking about that. And so would love to um, have a chat about that. Um, some folks from Hedera are very interested in this and they want to get started. And I'd love to be able to give them some guidance on how to do that. Cool. Sounds good. All right. Excellent. Thanks. Okay. Um, and Daniel, I saw that you'd done some updates on DidPeer and AFJ Interop. And PR 2748, just wondered where you were on that. Yeah, uh, this is, again, I've been out for a few weeks, so I, not a lot of movement, yeah. but uh, I've returned to this yeah. and started poking around again. Um, I was under the impression that uh, handling multiple versions of a protocol um, by the same handlers, I, I was under the impression that was more further along than it actually is. Um, so there's some catch up that needs to be done there in order to make it so we can actually okay. handle 1.0 did exchange and 1.1 did exchange. Um, but I think that's the last thing uh, keeping this PR uh, okay. up at the moment. Um, so I'll, I'll be digging into that. Um, it, it's kind of been done before with out of band, but I'm not yeah. totally happy with how that's been handled there. So I, 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 I might follow suit. I might try to improve upon that a little bit, um, but either way, hoping to make progress and, and get this done and out of the way as quickly as possible. Excellent. Good. Okay. Um, not seeing Sheldon here, so we'll move on from that. Um, Akif, uh, did rotation. You're getting close to that one. I saw some commits today. Yeah, yeah I just was um finishing up some of the the stuff uh, from the PR comments so this morning just working on adding two more uh endpoints which is to create the did uh peer two and four so I think that was one of the recommendations is that um right now there's no endpoints to actually do that outside of the did exchange create create request so I'm just pulling uh, some of that logic into a separate endpoint that will be under did rotate. So um, I can share my screen just um, to be sure. Yeah. Um, Ian, are you listening to this? <laughs> I'm a little worried you're doing the same thing. Uh-oh. We should coordinate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Definitely. Yeah. I if there's... not realize you were working on that, Aki. Well, honest... But maybe. I mean, you might be doing... Let me uh, unshare my screen and you can share. Oh, there's sure. a beautiful sun coming up here. It's quite nice. bright. <laughs> um, let me just share my screen. Yeah, so you guys can see this. Ooh, Ian's not so, here. I thought he was here. I'm, just I'm here. Oh, okay. You're. Uh, oh, there you are. You're. Uh, you're not. So they'll. Yeah, so basically it would just be a post method under did rotate. There'll be another one for did peer four. And the only two things that I think that is required to create the did peer is uh, whether you have a mediation record and your, your current endpoint. So I was just pulling the logic out from what's in did exchange. Um, and I noticed that things are added in by query here, whereas uh, I'm not sure I usually tend to do things through a JSON body, but you guys can let me know if that's the right way to do things but oh, I, yeah um the, the, there is I, the setting there is the setting emit did peer two and did peer four that's wouldn't, right wouldn't we use that um 
I think that's still all embedded in part of the did exchange logic. So you still have to add things in order for it to create the, to call the create method. Yeah. So Steven, um, the stuff that I'm working on is related to using the did peer two and did peer four in invitations and connections. Yeah. So I don't think there's uh overlap right now. So, um, okay. So what the what the what the stuff I'm working on it will create a did peer two or did peer four for the invitation based on the setting, and then reuse the if there's an existing did peer two or did peer four it'll reuse it, um, mm -hmm. and then I'll be testing that with connection reuse and blah blah blah. Um, the other piece that I talked about working on that I haven't started yet is the ability to actually create did peer two and did peer four independently through the wallet create did. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I haven't, I, I didn't touch that yet because I was running into the same issues that Akif was just talking about where you need a bunch of inf extra information that needs to go into the did. So I'd put yeah. it off. So I think Akif and I should probably just touch base. Yeah. Just yeah. make Actually, sure that, uh, you know, we're not stepping on each other's toes, but I don't, I don't think there's overlap right now. It's just potentially we're touching the same code. Good. Yeah. Okay. So I, I I'm just wondering that, if the create should be what you're using, uh, Akif, rather than putting one under rotate. That's yeah. I, I was just kind of thinking about that. So this could actually be under the wallet uh, method, or sorry, wallet endpoint. So it should actually be maybe slash did peer two slash create, and then did peer four slash create. So it could be under here. Well, you wouldn't you wouldn't yeah. need to have separate endpoints because you can. You can just put the the method you specify in, the, in the JSON body in the did create. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We can we can do that and maybe. So, um, so I can I can maybe stop the work on that. It, it was kind of just minimal work that I was doing this morning. But right. um, the other thing that we talked about was having as part of did rotate is you need to specify the did to rotate to, um, but the possibility of down the road adding a like sort of um all in one method that does the did creation and does the calls the rotate um, in one step. So right now it would be a two-step method. But um, I think for the purposes of getting this done, I don't know if we would add that right now. Okay. Colton? But yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so this is just a general concern. Um, it can wait until after Akif is done talking here, but I have a general not, concern yeah. about did peer two. Okay. Um, so la sometime last week it was brought to my attention that the service endpoints for, I don't remember which agent it was. Maybe this is something that needs to be brought up in the Aries discussion, but some of the service endpoints being generated, their type was didcom communication rather than, or yeah, it, didcom messaging instead of did communication uh, but there's a difference there in that did communication has a string for a service endpoint and did com communication is supposed to have a, a json object as its service endpoint uh did what was it? did com messaging is supposed to be or is it geared i guess more towards did com v2 rather than v1 and vice versa so just something that was brought up to my attention that i thought i should raise here do you have the definitive what it should be it, it's so both did communication and did come messaging have the accept field inside of of the accepted parameters of of that service type and you can specify whether you want to do didcom v2 with either one of those service types. Uh, the main difference between the two is that they're expected to be structured differently. So in did dash communication, you have the routing keys and recipient yeah. keys nested at the same level as the type attribute. Whereas in didcom messaging, it's nested inside of an object inside of the service endpoint attribute. Um, so it's as long as you're consistent with uh, your your structure of the service object itself. Uh, you can use either one for either did v one or v two. But it was brought to my attention that uh, 
the Digcom messaging was using a, or in one of the agents somewhere, was using a string rather than an object, which it was supposed to use. Yeah. Which as one far as uses I'm aware, the string? As far as I'm aware, Akapai is, is using exclusively did communication for the service objects that it's creating. Um, so okay. where did come messaging is being seen, I, I suspect that's probably in a, uh, AFJ or, or credo, um, that we should be looking at for, um, some scrutiny there, I guess. And, and it did communication remind me, is it a JSON, a string or JSON? For that one, the service endpoint is expected to be a string. Okay. Okay. Thank you for popping in there with the more definitive information, Daniel. Mm. Oh, well. Okay. Thanks for bringing that up. Let's take a look. And in did messaging, did I get the string right there? Uh, it's uh, that... did come uh, messaging and camel casing. Uh, I just typed it in the chat for, for clarity. Okay, thanks. If I could see the chat because it's so bright in here. What a sun. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. Um, any other comments on did rotation? Sounds like we've got some coordination to do, but it should be fine. And Ian and Akif will work it out and let others know. Daniel's looking at the did rotation as well, so you'll have a hand in that one. Good. Yeah, I just, I just want to, I guess so for the updating the wallet um, met, uh, endpoint um, because. Creating a did peer tool requires a few extra things. I think that would have to be refactored a bit. So if everyone's okay with that, like just um I, I think like so it, would that only only affect it if you're making a did peer two two? Two or four, yeah. Two or four, yeah. So, I think that well, the case is that's additional features, right? Right. I think the wallet endpoints have been um, overly focused on like did solve and did key mm -hmm. creation so far. Uh, so yeah. the, the options are rigidly defined um, for what is required to create a did solve or a did key type did. Um, so I, I think wonder... as we as we support more did methods, the requirements for each did method is going to be quite specific. So I think it makes sense for that options to either be arbitrary, you can specify anything you need. And then the method that you define um, processes those options and, and complains if there's issues with, um, you know, missing options or, or anything like that. Um, okay. And then at, at the endpoint level, we just accept an arbitrary object of, of options. Okay. I think, I think that makes sense for now. And then down the road, we can continue to generalize it further. So I yep. think that makes, that makes it easy to get this implemented. <laughs> Good. Excellent. Okay, and then the last thing I wanted to touch on um, uh, implementation work that's going on is did uh, RPC or sorry, didcom RPC, DRPC, um, just the lessons learned, Akif, and and what yeah. what you've added. Yeah, so that was also me. Um, so the lessons learned was um, at the time of the initial the way the R the RFC was written is. Um, problem reports and acknowledgements were not required, and I still we don't need acknowledgement messages from um, from based on the experience of implementing this. But what we did come across is if there was issues with um, the agent to agent messaging, um, the the requesting agent uh, doesn't have a, a sort of context of if anything goes wrong and why it went wrong. So we thought that maybe it might be best for the responding agent to 
actually send a problem report if there is an issue processing the incoming request uh, at the agent level. And yep. then that would further just complete the transaction. Um, so yeah, I think we just added a little piece in the RFC that a problem report should be could be sent um, by the responder. Yeah. Um, with that being said, from what I've been told is that uh, the DRPC implementation is working both in Akapai and Credo. Uh, so for the intended use cases that the VC wallet team is using it, for example, they, it seems like it's working well. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So Daniel, not application layers, but just messaging layers. So at the application layer, the API returns validation errors. But if by chance you pass through the validation and you send some kind of bad message, or something that the other Seabor. agent can't understand. You send Seabor, not JSON. Sorry? <laughs> you send Seabor <laughs> instead of JSON. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. You're just basically what you're what you're saying there, Daniels. Yeah. Messaging yeah. layer errors. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. All right. Um we have an RC1, Akapai RC1. Um, are we ready to go with a RC2? I think my plan was that did rotation and ideally the reuse. The, so the two things that are um, active and, and close to completion would be included in 0120. Um, thinking we could do an RC2. Um, I Sorry, I didn't get a chance to create a query that would show where, um, what's, uh, what's in RC2. Um, so, uh, you know, or sorry, what's in main that is not in RC1. Um, I probably should have had that ready to go. Um, hang on one sec. Uh, um, open and merged. Interesting. Uh, there we go. Um, so there's um, RC1 there. I've done a bunch of things on the GitHub pages, so that's irrelevant um, to the rest of the world. Um, we've got a non-creds things. One of the main things was the problem with the revocation notification. Yeah. This one? The... Oh, yeah, that's this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which was causing issues in, um, yeah, so I think we will probably will. I'll, I'll do an RC2 just for that one. Um, but I think we're holding off on um, on finalizing zero twelve zero for did rotation and peer did and um, reuse. I think those things should be all part of zero twelve. We good with that? Yeah, and we'll we definitely be down don't to want this almost um, no. Sorry, we just definitely don't want any of this uh, non-creds upgrade stuff in yeah. 12. Okay. Okay. Um, status of 1.0, I don't know that we need to spend a lot of time on that. Um, it's going to follow 12 um, fairly closely. I think the non-creds piece will be will be it with the upgrades and um, you know, people will be able to use it um, still with prior, but but the goal will be upgrading to the um, 
ledger agnostic and on creds and be able to use that with a bunch of other ledgers. Um, DRPC was added directly into Credo. Um, it is in the main branch, um, but I'm not sure whether it's going into 050 or not. Um, so in, in response, Jose, to your question, I'm not exactly sure where it would be. That would have to talk, uh, yeah, Discord message on, um, on Open Wallet would probably help with that. All right. Um, I think we've covered uh, PRs. Um, I don't know if there's any issues that we want to go over. So we're probably done. If there's any other topics people want to bring up. Um, I actually did have a couple of issues that I opened up that might yeah. be worth calling out real fast here. Um, Two right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so first, uh, I'll briefly talk about the multi-use invitation one. Um, it's okay. this is really low priority. Um, there's just an issue with emitting the keyless update webhook. Um, we can probably push that off. Uh, it's not really hair on fire. the The next one though, that did peer respond in kind behavior behaving quite strangely. Um, so it, when using a multi-use invitation, um and uh, having somebody uh, perform a request through that multi-use invitation with a did peer two um, mm -hmm. or a did peer four, for some reason that I do not understand yet, uh, Akpai is still creating an unqualified did, but instead Ooh. of including the did document and they did doc attach, it's doing a did rotate attach. So it's this weird oh. mixture of two different routes through through the protocol. Um, okay. So this is quite broken at the moment um, That's and, bad. and needs some attention. Okay. This one's really high priority then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are you able to take that or do we need to find somebody else to do this? One? I can take a look at that one because I think it's going to be the same code that I'm working on right now. Yeah, you're probably right. Okay. If you don't mind, I'm going to attach your name to it. Thanks, Ian. I'll take a look at it. Uh, yeah, I'll take a look. Okay. Well, that didn't work. Sorry. That worked. All right. Any other ones you wanted to highlight or anyone wants to highlight? We've got the upgrade. The two wallets concurrently, so recent ones. I did have this one. Um, Daniel, I don't know if you want to take a look at this one at all, but um, this is the um, running the generate open eye, which I run when we do a release. I got an error on fail to start. Um, it has to do with permissions and agent log. Aha. I just realized that. Um, all right. I suspect we've seen this before. This has to do with the multi, um, multi log, uh, the multi tenant logging change that was made. I'm sure. Gotcha. Um, I could certainly take a look. Um, okay. it, it looks like you were able to work around it though, right? Um, It's it's probably honestly not required for us to have any logging going on for the open API generation. It just spins up an Akapai instance in order to to pull. Oh, I know that. Swagger. Yeah. So we can probably just remove that line and just call that good. But there is no logging going on. I I, I doesn't Akapai have to be running in order to generate the open API? Right. And, and so then this isn't the, then the script didn't work. Right. Um, yeah. I. I think the script needs adjustment, but it's it's a matter of over specifying oh, parameters that it just doesn't need. I was I able to fix this by removing the log item. That's yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I can probably fix that. I should have realized what I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I did realize what was going on. Okay, sorry about that. It was a while ago. 
<laughs> okay. Log file. I just have to find where that is. I'll take a look. Um, okay. Oh, yeah, there is a fun one here. And again, a, 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 not a hair on fire one at all, but um, there's certain places. So we use doc strings to generate internal documentation. And um, when people put in comments that are documentation doc strings, sometimes they um, structure the data such that uh, we get errors in generating the documentation. And so there's um, a handful of places right now where those errors are coming up. Um, so at some point, somebody will take a look at that, but it's pretty low priority. So those are the recent, one, recent ones. Um, yeah, I think that should cover. Other than that, people are working on some of the other ones. I just noticed the one Daniel's working on, for example, the Akbar Credo did exchange. So sounds good. The pull requests we're getting down to, um, eliminating the last of them. Obviously, we've talked about these ones. The two concurrently did rotate. Um, the new format was what we demoed early. Um, the please acts will go away once the um, uh, the Aries RFC is merged. Um, and then these last three, I'm, I don't know what we'll ever do with those. Daniel, I'm hoping you can tell me. <laughs> <laughs> uh probably end up closing yeah them, to be honest yeah yeah all right uh i had Good one enough. more issue uh, any other questions comments oh yeah 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 one more issue that um it was opened a few weeks ago uh there was some back and forth on it and then there hasn't been any any further chatter on it but it seems like it might be something we will want to do is uh 2781 the uh, lack of user agent header yeah. one. Um, I don't suppose anybody's heard any movement from the anonymy folks nope. on this. It, it seems like they have a fix. Uh, maybe all we need to do is just encourage them to open a PR. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this one seemed like a. Um, this is preventing Akapai from being used in certain environments, um, which isn't ideal, of course. Uh, AWS especially yeah. is picky about which user agents it permits. Definitely um, not ideal. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, and so is Cloudflare. So I remember doing some Python stuff and the Python was getting blocked because Cloudflare was like, oh, you might be some sort of bot network. Okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'll finish this off in a moment. No need to wait for this. Okay. All right. Any other comments to wrap up? Thanks, Daniel. And, um, I'll, I'll try to set up a meeting, um, a little later this week to talk over the uh, how to do a registry. Um, Hedera folks are really anxious for it, so I'd really like to help out, but I, I don't have an answer of, of what that is, so I'd like to coordinate something. Cool. All right. Thanks all for joining. Yeah, thank you. And with that, we'll wrap up the meeting. Thanks for the demo, Golda and team. Uh, Kenny and team, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Take care all.